Hello everyone and welcome to the Empowering People International Broadcast. My name is Dr. Stanley Williams and this is my beautiful wife, Dr. Bettina Williams. We want you to know that the devil is defeated and Jesus is Lord. He's the God of all seasons. That means that miracles are happening no matter what the season is, even in our hour, God is still a supernatural God. God has called you to victory and triumph. In fact, he's coming back for a glorious church, not a defeated, broke down, frustrated, defeated church, but he's coming back for a church that is full of glory, power, and authority. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. We're living in that day and that hour, but God wants for you to arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Get ready for a word that is going to reflect the glory and the power that God has released in your direction. It's a setup for your greatest hour of victory. Let's go to the word. Welcome to the broadcast today. I'm Dr. Beth Tina Williams, and I'm here with my husband, Apostle Dr. Stanley Williams. And today we're going to be ministering to you concerning the importance, the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's important to know who he is. He's not an it. He's not a thing. He is the third person of the triune Godhead. He is God. He is with us today. He fills us and he helps us, he comforts us, he advises us, he counsels us. He strengthens us with might in the inner man. He is God with us today. And so it's important to know who he is, that the Holy Spirit, he is the most important person in the earth today. Did you know that? Yes, he is. The Holy Spirit, he is God with us. You can't see him, but he's here and he makes his presence known in very important ways. Let's go before the uh, Lord in prayer today, and then we're going to turn it over to Apostle Stanley and go right into the word. Father God, we just thank you. We honor you and we bless you. We thank you for the ministry and presence of you, your Holy Spirit in us, that you're with us. You didn't leave us. You didn't abandon us. But as Jesus promised his disciples that he would go away so that he can send another comforter, a helper who would be with them and in them. And we know that the promise of the Holy Spirit is unto us today. And as many are as a far off, as many as the Lord, you, Lord, our God, shall call. Mm -hmm. So we pray that as those who are watching and will listen to the broadcast, we pray that you will manifest yourself, show yourself strong in their lives in a new and living way. Help each one to grow closer to you, stronger in you, and be able to experience the magnificence, the awesomeness of your presence, wisdom, and your power today in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, Apostle. Today, you know, we want to just continue talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to emphasize this fact that the Holy Spirit is not just some force. That's right. The Holy Spirit is, is a person mm -hmm. who is a full member of the Godhead. Yes, he is. And I want to make sure I welcome you to this broadcast and let you know we love you. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit is a full member of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. Now, Scripture is clear regarding the Holy Spirit. So let's start with Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, <clears throat> Ananias, 
Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Let's go back to the first part of the passage. Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Now let's go back to that part. Why have thou conceived this thing in thy heart, and thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? God. And Ananias, hearing these things, fell down these and words. gave up the ghost, and a great fear came on all them that heard it. So you can see that the Holy Spirit is an equal part of the Godhead. He is yes. God. Yes, and he's important. Yes. He, you know, we need to understand that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, and he died on the cross to give us everlasting life. And he didn't send his son to condemn the world, John 3 and uh, 17. He did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But when Jesus, before he died, he told his disciples, he said, I'm going to go away and I'm going to send you somebody in my stead, in my place. I'm going to send you a helper, a comforter. I'm going to send him to you, the Holy Spirit. And he is who we're talking about today. He is the embodiment of God in us. He's, he's not just the wind. The wind is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. You can't tell where it goes and comes. It just blows here and there. He's not just fire. You can see an example of fire. But as Jeremiah said, he's like fire shut up in my bones. He's not, he's not just a symbol, a type of things, but he is a person that manifests himself in multiple ways. And he has, he has come to live inside of you. He's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And Jesus is ever living and seated on the right hand of the throne of majesty. Well, he came after Jesus departed. Jesus told them to tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, we can see where the Bible tells us clearly how cloven tongues like a fire set upon each one of them. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. That's the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit wants to reign in you. He wants to reign in your life today so that you're filled with his presence. You're filled with might. You're filled with power. You're filled with wisdom from above and from on high. And as Ananias learned the hard way, when you are dealing with someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit and you're mishandling them or you're just thinking this is a mere man, understand this. It's not just a mere person, a mere people that you're dealing with when you're dealing with saints of God, people that are separated unto God, people that are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. You're dealing with the presence of God in them. A prophet said years ago, she said, she said it like this. She said, it's one thing for you to offend one for, I won't give the name. It's one thing for you to offend this person as a human being, but it's another thing entirely for you to offend the Holy Spirit in the person. We have to always be aware when we're handling mm. or entreating or working with or dealing with one another that we're created in the image of God and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and it's the Holy Spirit indwelling us so that we are operating and entreating one another with honor, with respect, with the care and the 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 the, the care and the, the the wisdom of God because we know who we are and we know whose we are. And you can see in this example that Ananias lied not unto men but unto God. And he was talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit in them. We're always to honor and reverence him and never to offend him, never to deny his presence, never to, to, to grieve the Holy Spirit. But we're to welcome him and we're to walk 
and allow him to live in us, allow him to guide us and allow him as the spirit of truth to flow through us, our hearts and minds so that we're pleasing to God at all times. Apostle? The Holy Spirit is not only God, yes, but the Holy Spirit was sent, he was sent. from both the Father yes. and the Son. Mm -hmm. Here's the evidence. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, this is Jesus speaking. I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The promise of the mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. John 15, 26. But when the Helper comes, yes. whom I will send, this is Jesus mm -hmm. speaking as well, to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth mm -hmm. who proceeds from the Father, the will bear witness about me. He will. Yes. This is the Holy Spirit, yes. his mission to speak to us about what Jesus mm -hmm. has said. Amen. Amen. And we know that the Holy Spirit is here today as we shared before. He is our helper. He's with you to help you. Let him help you. You know, in this younger generation especially, it's important to, to communicate to you that you need help. You need the Holy Spirit. You can't, you can't build a career. You can't have a family. You can't progress in life and just ignore the need for the presence of the Holy Spirit. You need his wisdom. You need his power. You need his direction. You need him in your mm -hmm. life, guiding you, reminding you, keeping you in remembrance of the Father's will for your life. So many people have gotten off track in life. So many people are doing things that God never ordained for them to do or in areas where God never uh, ordained for them to be in. Why? Because they don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit. If you feel like I'm off course in life, my life is not where it should be. I know I'm stuck in a rut. It's time for you to stop. It's time for you to acknowledge God. It's time to acknowledge him in all your ways so he can direct and make your path straight. You need the Holy Spirit. He's a helper and he helps us to recall the truth. He helps us to remember the word of God so that as you study and apply yourself to the word of God, he'll bring it up in you. You know, there are things that I've read in the word and study in the word in times past and I could be ministering to somebody or witnessing to somebody in around town and the Holy Spirit will bring that word right back up in my spirit so that I'm able to speak the wisdom of God to them at the moment, at the right time, and able to build them up, encourage them, or give them that clear direction that they need. And I want to read Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 and turn it back over into apostles' hands. It says, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, in our infirmities. We have human frailties and weaknesses. We need him, for we do not know what to Pray for as we are, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings too deep for words, or groanings that cannot be uttered. We even need the Holy Spirit to teach us to pray right, to help us to intercede, to help us to, to, to pray and see the, the manifestation or receive the evidence and the fruitfulness of our prayers knowing that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man are very much. The Holy Spirit helps us when we're weak and when you don't know how to pray properly so that you can hit the target every time, so that you can reap great results and great benefits, so that you can hit the bullseye, so you can see the manifestation of that which you're hoping for and believing for. So I want to encourage you, seek the Lord. Allow the ministry of the Holy Spirit to reign in you. Allow him to manifest himself in your life, even as you pray, so that when you pray, you know I'm not hitting and missing, but I'm right on target and I'm praying after the will of the Father. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows. Amen. I'd like to encourage every one of you to begin to seriously meditate in the Word of God. Remember what the psalmist David said, if you meditate in the word day and night, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. I believe that everything that you set your hands to do will prosper. 
And I believe that God is interested in your prayer life. Develop that prayer life. Begin to stand up in God's face and begin to declare the word of God. God loves it when he's in communication with his people. In Jesus' name. This is an exciting time in history. We are seeing the word of God unfold and come into full manifestation every day, just watching the news. So I wanna encourage you, get your news from the original source. Stay in the Word of God daily, and as you stay in the Word of God, enjoying with daily communion and prayer, talking to the Father, He will show you things to come, and He will manifest His power to you. In fact, God has ordained for you to be in the driver's seat. He's ordained for you to be the head and not the tail above only and not beneath, blessed and not cursed. God wants for you to be a difference maker and a change agent. In other words, God has put you in a position of power and authority because we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he's ordained for you to walk a life of victory in the word. Let's go back to the word of God. You know, not only that, the, the Holy Spirit knows, because you are absolutely, everything that you said is correct, but the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Yes, he is. Oh, He's yes. a comforter. Amen. He's a counselor. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is what the word of the Lord says, John 14, 16. Yes. And I will pray the Father, mm -hmm. and he shall give you another comforter. One mm -hmm. version says, one just like me. Mm -hmm. He that he may abide with you, and here's what I said, and I say it again, yes, forever. Forever. Not just the first century, mm -hmm. but for all saints throughout all ages. And you know, can I say this about abiding forever? Men will stay with you for a season or a time, but he will never leave you nor forsake you, according to Hebrews 13 and 5. He will be with you always, always. forever. You can always trust him. You can always rely on him. And don't doubt that he's with you. He will not leave you or abandon you. He's with you and he loves you with an unfailing, unconditional love. So never question a doubt. If you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you've received the Holy Spirit and you acknowledge and honor him, don't ever doubt or question or wonder, is he with me? Has he left me? No, he's right where he always have been and he's waiting on you to return or waiting on you to believe. He's waiting on you to acknowledge him and say, Holy Spirit, let's pick up where we left off. If I made a mistake, I repent. I ask you to forgive me and let's keep on going. He's with you for the long haul on the journey for your whole life with you and to keep you and to seal you unto the day of redemption so that when you leave this earth, and you exit your physical body, you can have the assurance that I'm saved and I'll be with my father. And when he comes back with that host, great cloud of witnesses, I'm in that cloud because he reigns. Holy Spirit, he reigns in you. He reigns in me. Apostle. Not only that, the Holy Spirit is a sanctifier. Yes. This yes, is holiness. Yes, the Holy Spirit yes. is in every aspect. Mm -hmm working in the life of a believer. He's yes. in every aspect. He is not only empowering, but he is also sanctifying. First Corinthians yes. 6, 11 says this, and such were some of you, but you were washed, mm -hmm. you were sanctified, mm -hmm. you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. So sanctification comes from the spirit. Mm -hmm. There are two things that are cleansing. Mm -hmm. The power of the spirit, he's a sanctifier. And the washing of the water mm -hmm. by the word. Yes. So the Holy Spirit is a sanctifier. Yes. Not only that, the Holy Spirit is active. Yes, he is. He's moving even now. He's working even now. And he is a unique person. Yes. You can grieve him. 
you may quench him. Those are attributes of personality. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is a person. Yes. And God is speaking to mm -hmm. us and he's saying to us that we need to remember the promise. This is the key as we bring this down. Mm -hmm. The promise. The promise. Acts chapter yes. 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know beyond a doubt that God has made this Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And now when they heard this, they were acutely distressed and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, what should we do, brothers? And Peter said, repent. That's number one. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, number two. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the point. For the promise. Yes. It's for you. Mm -hmm. And for your children. And for all who are far off. That's us. Mm -hmm. As many as the Lord our God shall call. The Holy Spirit is for the church throughout all ages. Mm -hmm. The gifts are still here, and they can be manifest. And I'm going to pass it back because we want to pray the prayer of faith. But listen, God wants to heal. God is willing to deliver, but he has to have faith. Don't let anybody's theology take your faith. Don't let anybody's attitude take away your faith. Have faith in God. Amen. And I want to encourage us to not only believe God, but make sure that according to the word that we're living to honor him, to reverence his Holy Spirit, reverence his presence in your life. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident in this very thing, in this thing, is that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. What does that mean? He is working in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. He's teaching you. He's guiding you. He's reminding you. He's helping you. He's comforting you. He's advising and counseling you. We want to acknowledge him and you want to acknowledge him every day, all the time, continually. You want to build a strong, faith-filled relationship with the Lord, with his Holy Spirit in your life, acknowledging him, acknowledging him for your direction, decisions, acknowledging him uh, in prayer even. And one of the things I want to encourage us to do is as you were sharing, Apostle, make sure that you avoid grieving the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you don't, you don't limit him or cut him off or or, 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 or uh, reject the Holy Spirit and definitely don't want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit or bring reproach on the Holy Spirit. You want to honor him in your lifestyle, in your living. You want to make sure that the way you're living is pleasing to the Lord because we don't want to grieve him. He sealed us unto the day of redemption. What does that mean? He's the one that's testifying of the Father because of the shed blood of Jesus and you accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior that you're saved. You don't want for the Holy Spirit to be grieved when he's still in you and keeping your soul, mm -hmm. you know, where your destination is heaven instead of hell. It's important to know that heaven and hell is real. And he, the Holy Spirit, is with us, indwelling us, teaching us, helping us, guiding us, and enabling and allowing us to live for the Father, continuing that perfect work in us that was began and started on the first day that we receive Christ. Why? So that in the end, you will know that you've done the will of the Father and the Father is pleased with your life. You are set apart for God. You're not, you're in the world, but you're not of 
the world. I want for you to pray the prayer of salvation with me right now and believe it with all your heart and ask him, Father God, Father God, I come to you. I come to you. A sinner. A sinner. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Wash me. Wash me. As white as snow. As white as snow. And fill me. And fill me. With your Holy Spirit. With your precious Holy Spirit. So that I can live. That I might live. Be taught. Be taught. And be led. And be led. By your Spirit. By your Spirit. I don't want to live. I don't want to live. In the way that's pleasing to me. In the way that's pleasing to me. And right in my own eyes. And right in my own eyes. But I want to know. I want to know that I'm obeying, that I'm obeying and fulfilling, and fulfilling your, will your will for my life. For my life, I give you, I give my you heart, my heart. Lead me and guide, lead me and guide you every day, every day by your spirit, by your spirit, and in your word, and in your word of truth. Of truth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. If you prayed that prayer with us today, I want you to write us on our ministry website at empoweringpeople.us. Let us know you pray with us. Reach out to us. And we want you to especially be baptized. Get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues and other tongues as the Spirit of God empowers you and give you the utterance. He's living today and he wants to reign in you. Apostle? I want you to know that God mm -hmm. is on your side. Yes. Father, I pray the prayer of faith. Yes. I release my faith for supernatural miracles of every kind. Lord, anyone who is willing to stretch forth their faith to believe you yes. for their particular situation, yes. let it be done even right now yes. in, the name in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. I quote you, Lord. You said, I am the God that healeth thee. I believe you. I believe you who you say you are. Yes. I believe you'll do what you say you'll do. And I believe by faith that nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible for God. Amen. And we I want you. all of you to remember, only, only God, God is able, able to, to keep, keep us and us from, from falling. falling. God, God bless you. <laughs> we want to thank you for being a part of our Empowering People International family. We so appreciate you. You are loved. And every soul that's impacted by this broadcast, you are a part of it. Remember that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. And as long as we have him, we have absolute victory. You have received the word of God today. And I want to encourage you to stand on it. Stand on the word of God and hold on to God because he's holding on to you. Believe God because he believes in you. He created you for victory. He created you for triumph. You shall not go down in defeat for one split second as long as you are standing on the rock of your salvation. And that's none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the Lord of the harvest. He is the Lord of victory. He's the Lord of triumph. And he is the Lord of the host of the armies of heaven. You're on the winning side. You're on God's side. Stand in the victory. God bless you.